So students, we are talking about circuit switch network. In our previous discussions, we uh, introduced you to a simple circuit switch network, and we looked at how the, the setup phase, the data transfer phase, and the connection teardown phase, they work in a circuit switch network. Students, before we leave this discussion, I want to go through a couple of uh, concepts with you. Students, first of all, as I explained to you, um, what we discussed was that the circuit switching This is a physical layer concept. The circuit switching happens on the physical layer. Students, the second one is, is a concept of resource reservation. Students, so very important concept which you have to understand. So, so basically, in the resource reservation, you actually do the setup before you start the data transfer. Circuit switch is different to packet switch in this particular way, and you have to understand this. In the case of circuit switch, we reserve the resources and we set up the connection once that connection is established, and we receive an acknowledgement from the receiving end. Only then we are allowed to send any data. So it's third point. The data is transferred between two sources, and it is not packetized. So students, um, you will see that when we are going to be talking about the virtual circuit approach, when we are going to be talking about the switching at the data link layer, you'll see that that switching will, will actually occur um, using the data blocks that we'll call as frames. In the case of physical layer switching, the data is nothing but a continuous flow which is sent by the source system and received by the destination station, and there may be periods of silence in there as well when um, the two machines or the um, two devices, although a connection is established, they have got nothing to send to each other. Students, the last point that I want to make, there is no addressing involved. Students, we'll talk about global addressing. We'll talk about the virtual circuit uh, addressing when we are going to be talking about the virtual circuit approach. But in essence, in the physical layer circuit switching, there is no um, addressing that is involved. Now, students, an example could be in this example, we have got a service circuit switch network, which is used to connect our good old um, telephone um, lines. So we have got eight telephones in a small area, and um, analog signal communication is through four kilohertz voice channels. I'm pretty sure you're well aware of the analog bandwidth of a voice channel by, um, you, you know, uh, by, by, the, by this lecture. And so you know that if, if you've got eight telephone sets, you've got four um, kilohertz channels per um, voice channel in, in the analog case. We assume that each link uses frequency division multiplexing to connect a maximum of two voice channels. FDM is what we are using. And the bandwidth of each link is eight kilohertz. So each of our links is going to be 8 kilohertz once we use the FDM. Students, I'll draw this for you. When you see you've got four channels, four telephone sets on the left-hand side, communicating with four telephone sets on the right-hand side. And because these are our analog signals, um, as you can see, we have got four kilohertz bandwidth for um, each one of those signals. Students, um, there is a switch on the sending end, and we have got multiple switches on the receiving end. In terms of end devices, your switch number one, let's call it switch number one, is connected to the four telephone sets. So your end devices for this switch are telephone set number one, two, three, and four. Your end devices for switch number two are um, telephone sets five and six, and your end devices for this one, they are seven and eight. Students, in this example, um, if you see telephone one is connected to telephone seven, so once we, once telephone one establishes a connection, this is the pathway. We do some multiplexing. Um, FDM goes on to the link, which is eight kilohertz. So our bandwidth is eight kilohertz, high frequency link and it's demultiplexed, 
and then this stream is transmitted to um, telephone set number 7 and they are connected. Up students, in another example, we have got a circuit switch network and in this case, we, are, we have two remote offices of a private company um, and what this, um, this, this business has done is it has leased a high-speed T1 line from a communication service provider and that is what is used to connect these two remote offices. Students, uh, they are using two 4 by 8 which is four inputs and eight output switches in this network to connect these two offices. Students, this is how we are going to be doing it. Students, as you can see, we've got a switch number one, which is four by eight switch. And then we have got a switch number two, which is once again, four by eight switch. Students, in this case, you have got um, multiple outputs. You've got eight outputs, four of them, which take your um, input communication from one office to the line, there is a multiplexer and it multiplexes this to a high-speed line and then you've got a DMUX. So you've got a MUX and you've got a DMUX. We have shown the MUX and the DMUX in this case separately, but um, they can easily be imp implemented within the switch fabric, just for you to know. So um, we've got four extra outputs, which are for communication between or within this particular office. So if there is anything that comes from, for example, this first machine to this switch, and it is destined for um, machine number four, then in this particular case, it will go through one of these inputs out here, and it will be redirected to machine number four like this. If it is destined to, if something comes out of, for example, machine number two, and it is destined for machine number eight in this case, then this particular transmission will go through this MUX, it will go into the high speed line, it will come out and will use this link which is connected directly to this end device and this is how this is going to be switched. And this intelligence as to how this link is going to be switched, um, whether inside this particular office or onto the line and onto this remote office, this intelligence resides within our switches S1 and S2.